And welcome, once again, to another episode of the Horizon Roundtable. Hope you guys have been enjoying your summer. I am Bob McDonald, and as, and with me, uh, my co-host, Jimmy Lemke. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Jimmy Lemke, you can find on Panther U, uh, at PantherU on Twitter and at PantherU.com. Um, well, uh... I'm there so much often lately. Yeah, so... I don't know if I'm on the website very much, very often. Well, it exists still, so... It still exists. Uh, GoDaddy charged me for hosting yesterday, so it's still there. Well, yeah, so I guess, you know, GoDaddy is... uh, Oh, GoDaddy? Oh, okay, that... I'm over it. I like GoDaddy. They're fine. Their customer service was fantastic. That's why I really... They're like stalkers, man. I I think I had GoDaddy once, and they were complete stalkers. Gotta be better than HostGator, because I have that, and they charge me 200 bucks a year, and for what I don't know it's kind of stupid but anyway um, and you can uh, follow the uh, follow us on Twitter at Horizon RT um, Jimmy we had today uh, today we absolutely had to have uh, we had to uh, talk and yeah. we had to go with our go-to Detroit Mercy guy Carrick Jones how's it going folks Yes. It's, it's fantastic, Carrick. I'm really happy that we're able to bring you on and have this conversation because it, because at it, last just, I'm, our yeah, last exactly. national nightmare is over. <laughs> Detroit yeah. Mercy finally has a coach. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe it. Um, and I, I think the funniest thing is how quickly the narrative within our fan base changed once they hired someone. Um, it, 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 once again, I, I'm about at the point where I, I find most other Detroit Mercy fans laughable at best. Uh, but as soon as Vowell said, you know, we were looking at him since mid-April, you know, everybody's like, oh, it's okay. We're not behind the eight ball. We have six players on our roster. And actually, it could be five. I don't. I couldn't tell you for certain. Um, but Mike Davis has a long road ahead of him because mm-hmm. uh, Bakari and... Jermaine left uh, the program in a, a state of abyss. I think is probably the best word to uh, describe what's going on. I like on the word. There. I like the word shambles. The yeah, shambles could be one. Yeah, shambles it's, is a good one too. I've been using I mean, dumpster fire. That seems to work. Uh, dumpster uh, fire dumpster fire is our thing. Okay, fine. Dumpster fire is our thing. That is Amanda Braun copyrighted dumpster fire okay. years ago. All right. Um. Well, yeah, you know what? Given given the eight month, given the two months of silence, it might be more of a like a tunnel, you know, a sewer fire, maybe, you know, because it's under because it's under the because uh, it's under the surface. You might not see it, and nobody's gonna, you know, nobody's gonna see it until you walk it uh, walk down to the sewer. And nobody like wants a, to do that. Maybe more like a Democratic People's Republic of Detroit Mercy kind of thing. <laughs> The whole pro- – yeah, it, I I haven't gauged uh, – honestly, I'm just kind of surprised that this finally happened, that they you finally got, got, got a head coach. Got, you got you got Oakland fans flying drones over Detroit Mercy's campus, dropping in flash drives with videos of winning basketball. Like, hey, you could have this again. You could have this again. You, <laughs> I mean, you had met- they don't win very much either, though, so yeah. you're forgetting they're choke artists. Oh, I don't. Uh-huh. I don't need to forget because obviously I don't want to forget, especially after last season. Well, yeah, it, 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 but we it, got. It, it, <laughs> please, it got to the point where Matt Dudek was uh, having a having a coaches auction on his Twitter account, which, by the way, was won by my dog Harry. By the way, so he's very oh. disappointed that he he is very dis he was he barked in disapproval when he found out he wasn't getting the job, and I was a little disappointed because now I got to pay for kibble. <laughs> yeah, frankly, your dog Damn is it. gonna bark uh, for n- no, no matter what the reason was. Your well, dog doesn't need the, yeah, much no. reason. The, you're not wrong, and yeah, I make no guarantees that he won't bark again, even on this podcast. Because yeah, why not? Te- technically, I think your dog is the most frequent guest we have on the Horizon. He, he, he married. He yeah. Did you hear that, Harry? You're you're the most frequent guest on on the Horizon Roundtable. Congratulations. <laughs> Don't get them started. No, let's not do that. <laughs> I have two dogs. I got one that I got. I've got my older dog Bella, who doesn't bark at all, and I got the and got Harry over here who won't shut up. So he's all perfect. Right. He's perfect. Enough for about me. your dogs. All right, Carrick, so Carrick, do let her rip. you like Davis? Yes. Do you like or dislike the hire? I mean, I, I you know he wins everywhere he goes. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I liked the hire. I wasn't really enthused with the press conference. He is a very slow talker. Uh, wow. I mean, <laughs> wow. Hey, he's five five ninety four winning percentage, three fifty two and two forty one. You're absolutely right. He does win everywhere he goes. I mean, it was yeah. I mean, he was in the NCAA tournament just like a year before he got fired from UAB. Yep. Yeah, no, he he wins, and I, it seems to me that he has a plan, and he thinks he can turn it around quick. And he does have some pieces left on the roster, and then you you go in and throw in his son, who's very talented. Um, I tell you what, his son looks good. He is a real scrappy shooter. You know, he's he's six one, but he's kind of got that long, lanky body. Uh, can just drill shots from anywhere mid range or um, from the three point arc. And then Josh McFally back too. Uh, he announced he was coming back today. So well, they got news. a nice, nice little backcourt tandem with those two. Um, but everything else is very much in the air. Uh, Gerald Blackshear has been hurt for the last two years. The Cole Long's there. Um, if you like white guys from Nova Scotia who can't hit threes, um, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I oh, guess God. the German kid might still be there. I don't know. I couldn't uh, tell you. Uh, I mean, like it's looking like walk-ons are going to play unless this guy can pull a rabbit out of his hat. But the rumor is we're getting all of Texas Southern's recruits. Really? So that would that would put another freshman point guard in, three JUCO guards. Um, they got to find big men and quick though. Yeah. Um, and we're definitely behind the eight ball for that. I would have to think probably some grad transfers that may or may not pan out are probably the best situation. But. It's exciting just to have somebody after not having someone for two months. Um, yeah. And, I, you know, I hope he wins because, you know, we were kind of sold a load of crap with uh, the last guy. So That's true. And I, I feel it, not expect that we would be in as bad of a situation as we are now. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. I think with Mike Davis, I think I, Detroit, honestly – I think Detroit lucked out when it, it, by getting him. I mean, given who it, you didn't even know who they were going to get even before you know you were talking they were talking about Mike Davis. So the fact that they got a guy who, as Jimmy said, wins everywhere he goes. I mean, and the fact that he's going to have, I mean, the fact that he's had such a success at Texas Southern. I mean, yeah, at, yes, it's a it's a you know he, they're in the SWAC. Which is you know which is famous for you know playing a bunch of you know having to travel everywhere for non conference games and getting oh, pounded. Well, it's an it's an it's an HBCU league, yeah. so we have to remember so, that like yeah, where, so where, where the Horizon yeah. League has problems, we're it, not nearly the problems that no. the SWAC and the MIAC have. So no, no, and that, and and that and you got to take that and I take that into consideration when you talk about Texas, uh, you know what Mike Davis and Texas Southern and. That he was able to, yeah, that he has been able, and he, again, in, I think in the case of Texas Southern, that was a situation where he was hired, like, really late in the cycle. I think that was, he was, I, I think I mentioned it in one of the earlier podcasts, where he was actually hired in, like, It was August. an August hire. It was an August hire. That, well, they had that, uh, what was his name, Tony Harvey, right? Yeah. They had Tony Harvey, and he got... He like he resigned. It was it was a weird thing. It was a weird. I remember it being a weird reason he resigned. Like I don't remember exactly why. Like I don't think I don't think it ever really came up why he resigned from that job. But Mike Davis was available, mm-hmm. and yeah, I mean he was he was he was available. So yeah, he was well, available yeah. and he's a good coach. So you know, getting him, you know, getting around it. I don't know what it was that uh, you know. I don't know what it exactly was that you know he flamed out for Tony Harvey. Mm-hmm. But I know that it was you know Mike Davis was available, and that's kind of what it was for for him here. Is that you know you, Mike Davis is a guy who's kind of above what the swag is. I mean, yeah. even after UAB, I think if he had sat around for a year, he probably would have had a better job than Texas Southern to go into. But um, you know, it was it was it was available to him, and this is maybe not exactly the uh, 
you know, maybe not exactly the same kind of thing, but it's something where he's, you know, it's something where Detroit Mercy had a had had a real need, and they needed to hit a home run because they didn't need another Bakari Alexander, where they're not 100 percent sure they got a, a guy that. You know, maybe they're sure, but they needed a guy who can who can win and can prove he's proven to win. So they kind of needed to get something. And you know, my, as far for being so late, I think even if this had happened at the final four, I would have thought that Mike Davis would have been a pretty good hire for them. Yeah. So I think that Vols, I think Detroit Mercy did a heck of a job. You know, finding their coach did did it take a while? Yes. Yeah. Did they have some missteps along the way? I'm sure. But you could do a lot worse. Uh, yeah. For There's... anybody who's curious, the reason I said that Tony Harvey flamed out is because Tony Harvey's now an assistant coach at UIC. Oh, cool. oh. of course yeah. he is. FYI. So. Ah, oh, so they they'll they'll meet. So that's gonna be interesting. I, I think be, I, I, when you look at tra- when you look at Mike Davis's track record, it's pretty clear that the guy likes a challenge. <laughs> I mean, the, the guy uh, you're you're talking about a guy who had to replace Bobby Knight, and you, you, what what kind of challenge was that? He just had to play down play that down for as long as he had, and you know that. And did the same thing at again with Texas Southern again a challenge. So and there, right now there's no really bigger challenge right now than Detroit Mercy at this point in time. Um, I mean yes and no. There's obviously there's inroads. I mean the, yeah. it's a good recruiting territory. Mm-hmm. You know we're not that poor. Um, and, and contrary to what Matt Dudek believes, the thing is not <laughs> that bad. Um, you know, they, there's there's things in place. I think the hardest thing for him is going to be how does he transition this year because they're so late. Um, I I don't know who's even available. Yeah, you know, even if they get the Texas Southern recruits, that still doesn't really help with the fact that they don't really have any big men on the roster. Um, well, I don't I don't I don't think Detroit Mercy would really be planning on winning this year anyway. No. No. Um, I think that you I think you keep I think you you know you got like five or six scholarship guys. If he can bring in four or maybe five scholarship guys and walk into the season, maybe like pick up a few more walk-ons than you would have otherwise been comfortable with, and then you can walk in and say, "Okay, you can sit in any kid's living room and say, "Look, I've got three scholarships, you know, from you know, I've got three open scholarships. You're transferring out of your team at break. You want to, you know, you 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 fall of 2018. You decided you didn't want to be at your school anymore, but because you played, you're not going to be able to. You you want to transfer. You want to be on scholarship somewhere. I have a scholarship open for you right now. That's something that a lot of schools have uh, made the decision to not carry the full 13. Because you can pick up a guy. Yeah. I mean, Green, Green Bay's got Sandy Cohen right now, who they wouldn't have had if had they not had a scholarship available. So it was a, you know, it, it was, a, it was to their benefit that they had that scholarship available for them. Um, I know we've done it a couple times, mm-hmm. and I know that Detroit Mercy is in a unique spot right now where sure. they can kind of just let this season, upcoming season, kind of just they can just take their lumps maybe pull in those guys, but be like, look, I've got starting spots open next year. This is a, this is a program where, you know, we have, we have lofty expectations and it's, we're a conference that is down and we can, we can step in and put some things together and win a title in the 1920 season. If we do everything enough, enough, right. I, I honestly believe that if Mike, you know, Mike Davis can turn it around quick enough where he can win at that level that quick. I think he could. I think he could have a Detroit Titans team winning or sharing a conference title by the 2020 season, and that's that that that's the kind of turnaround that's a that you know can be afforded them right now. And part of it is not having 12 players on scholarship, as we've seen over here in Milwaukee. I mean, we've lost. You know, we lost some strong players, both Jeter recruits and Val Jordan recruits. Uh, Val Jordan recruiting Jeremiah Bell, um, Bryce NZ and Brock Stahl being Rob Jeter guys, 
all three of those guys are are gone now. So, but Pat Baldwin had to coach them that full year, that first year. So now you know that anybody who's around, if if you really need to, if, if there's a bunch of people who don't like how Mike Davis coaches, a lot of those kids are already gone. So it's it's not quite a blank slate. But you know that most of the guys that Mike Davis will have in year one, most of them are going to be guys he chose to be there, and they chose to be under him. So you know that you know that Davis has got a blank enough slate, and he's a good enough coach, and there's a and like Carrick said, it's a it's a good enough recruiting area that, and they 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 have the scholarships available, where if you play it right, you know you're going to take lumps in 2018-19. But Detroit Mercy is a team that could, you know, turn around and make a run at a title just the following season. Yeah, and the big transfer on the market right now is uh, from just down the road at U of D Jesuit. Uh, I can't pronounce his last name right, so I'm not even going to try. Uh, but, Greg, one of the big Nigerian kids they had is leaving Illinois. Um, and that is a guy who we're rumored to be after, which wouldn't be surprising, uh, you know, given that he's from right down the street that would go ahead and fill your huge uh, big man hole in your second year because he's 6'10 um, and he was good enough to go to Illinois so if they can land a guy like that I don't know if that's the route Mike Davis is going to take but we'll find out yeah I think with with the situation you know, to Jimmy's point you know, it, it was a it's it was a foregone conclusion that this this season was going to be was going to be it's a transitional season. It's a throwaway hey, year, but and, you knew that. And, and, but they hey, knew that honestly, going in. But but who who knows? That's true. You know, this conference is so down so often. You never know when like NKU is going to slip up, or Wright State's going to get upset by somebody in the conference tournament, or Oakland's going to do what Oakland does. So you just you never know. When that opportunity is there, I mean, hell, we're we're what fifteen months removed from Youngstown State being a couple points away from the camp conference title game. I mean, that's that's really we were we were we were a few shakes away from having a nine versus a ten in the conference championship game. You and, were, you know, in <laughs> we, Motor City Madness. So and we're three months removed from Cleveland State being in the conference championship game exactly. as a nine so, seed. So there's literally no nothing that stops, you know, a Mike Davis coach Detroit Mercy team from maybe being that team that makes the surprise. So I don't want Detroit Mercy fans to hear me saying that this is a throwaway year and think, well, screw that guy. He's not giving even this team a chance. What I'm saying is that, like, they could walk into 2019-20 as a team expected to challenge for a conference championship. That doesn't mean they're precluded from doing it again. There would but have to be a guy, lot for, for this, that to happen. This is a guy that wins quickly. At, when he took over at Indiana, obviously it was a situation where, you know, it was, it, was a, it was a different situation with Bobby Knight, but he didn't fall off. And year two, they went to the Final Four. At UAB... He took over. They had a rough year in 06, 07. And then the next year, they were, boom, they were right there. They were right there at the top of, C of, of CUSA. At Texas Southern, he took over. It was, it was a late-in-the-year thing. They were already one of the better teams in the SWAC, but he, you know, he kept that, that ship online. You know, they, he kept that ship heading in the right direction. And then he hit the ground running, and he had what, what did they have four NCAA tournament appearances yeah, four. in his four. six years there? I mean, this is a guy who hits the ground running, and this is a guy who you know we talk about we talk about the kid from UD Jesuit who's transferring out of Illinois, and he's he's able to go into the, go to that kid and say okay. You wanna you wanna go play for a coach who can who can help you win and maybe you won't maybe you're not gonna get to that high major or even that major level. I met at mid major school. I have the opportunity for you and I've been there. There are not many coaches in the Horizon League, or have even ever been in the Horizon League that have been to a Final Four. 
And I, I would put Mike, Mike, Mike Davis may not be Brad Stevens, but he's more Brad Stevens than Raleigh Massimino, if you know what I'm saying. Vividly, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, now, to be, you are, you are correct with, with the way that the, the Horizon League is, there is the off chance that, that, that a Mike Davis team could theoretically, Surprise some people, but uh, honestly, I, I just <laughs> there, there would have to be a lot happen for that to be to be the case this year. Next year, on the other hand, next year you, especially given the fact that you have so much roster turnover, you're gonna have so many new fa- that you have so, that you're gonna have so many people coming in, yeah. and you're gonna have so much so much of a transition and they're going to be all they're basically going to be all Mike Davis's guys at that point 1920 looks like that could be their year it now, really could be i mean when I, when I talk about when i talk about the kid from the the Illini transfer yes i am not talking about as much as like you know this is a kid who is a is a flyer much of, I'm, I'm talking about like Detroit Mercy is in the position where they can take a flyer on a kid that yeah. may have some, you know, some issue. Maybe it's a health issue. Maybe you know, maybe maybe the kids had injury problems. Maybe the kid's like a weird tweener that doesn't really fit at the high major level. Maybe the kid is uh, maybe the kid's a, a grade problem. Maybe the kid is a a, a behavioral problem. And Mike Davis. Being a guy who worked for Coach Knight thinks that he can turn the guy around. Either way, if if Mike Davis has a spot available, which he's got many, he can take a flyer on one of sure. these kids. So what what what's attractive to me if I'm Mike Davis looking at the Detroit Mercy job is that you're you're basically given the uh, this this mold of this this clay hunk of clay and you've got the mold and you can do with it whatever you want there are not a lot of schools that are, uh, are like that you know when Val Jordan left us Pat Baldwin had a roster that was uh, you know it was slimmer but he didn't have the flexibility that Davis does at Detroit Mercy. also because Dro- Detroit Mercy is a private school you're able to do some things that we're not able to do that most of the conference isn't able to do so there's there's some flexibility there that they've got where a coach that can a coach can walk in there and if he knows what he's doing hint hint Mike Davis he could he could le- legitimately put together some some strong you know you can legitimately put together a strong team in a year and yeah, of course, nineteen twenty has a better outlook than eighteen nineteen, depending on who they get. But the, the, what matters most is that make Mike Davis has the flexibility to do with this roster what he wants. And he will. And what'll be interesting to watch is his best player from Texas Southern was an All American as a redshirt sophomore. Demontre Jefferson has is rumored to be considering transferring to sit out a year to play one year. Which is funny because. Uh, at one point in time, Demontre Jefferson was supposed to go to Cleveland State. I don't know what happened between. I don't know what happened that that didn't happen in the end of a Texas Southern. But it, it would it would be poetic justice that Demontre Jefferson ends up in ends up in the Horizon League anyway. So he was yeah he was getting recruit he was he was yeah if I understand it correctly he was slated to go to Cleveland State and something happened I can't I don't know what happened probably. You know, because it was you know this. I think it was the last year of the Gary Waters era, so you never know what happened. Um, but he ended up at Texas Southern, spent you know, yeah, and he did really well at Texas Southern for Mike Davis. And yeah, I, I, it's it's interesting because when you look at, and I actually I can't remember where I saw it on Twitter because I think he was tweet uh, he was actually tweeting about it himself. Thinking yeah. about potentially transferring to Detroit, and that really says something about Mike Davis that you have that you have his play, his current his well now former players wanting to come with him 
to be a part of something because they were a part of something already at Texas Southern, and this is so so that that so that lo- that level of loyalty I think is going to from his players, um, I think is going to serve him very well. Especially given, you know, especially given kind of the volatility of mid majors as it is, so we'll see. Um, I think it's a yeah. I, I I think the only thing is 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 that you get your you know Detroit finally gets his guy. Um, I. I I hate to play devil's advocate, but I'm going to because you know why not? You know what was the holdup? <laughs> I mean, seriously, the guy was sitting there. You know, what was the holdup? From what he said, he says he didn't want to leave. Right. I I think Texas Texas Southern is definitely in a um, as a program, it's in a little bit better place than some of the other ones. Sure. Um, it's definitely in a better place than like a and Alabama A and M or Grand. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Grand. definitely. Um, not as far as like what the basket the, the basketball program that you know the team as much as what as much as like the culture. The culture at Texas State is stronger now. Well, I'll say this: June thirteenth, Trey Jefferson writes. Oh. Demontre Jefferson writes, so the NCAA passes the transfer rule. Emoji with the eyes, emoji with the uh, the sly smile. <laughs> then, he says, then he says, my coach is leaving. Same two emojis. <laughs> God is good, God is great. Some people are like, what the hell? So he's like, if I don't go with Texas State, if I don't go with my coach, Texas State is still my number one option, 100. Sure. Uh-huh. Loyalty is just a big part of my life. Prayers, one hundred. Then, your you emoji couple, game is not strong right now. <laughs> my emoji game is awful, and that's that's fine. <laughs> no I like kidding. You language. sound like that Buick commercial right now. <laughs> he retweets. He retweets the Detroit Titans account, uh-huh. annou- announcing Mike Davis. Um, he retweets somebody. Uh, saying where can I get a Trey Jefferson jersey he retweets uh, somebody else talking about Detroit he retweets Rashad Phillips saying gotta bring Trey Jefferson and Damon Harge to Detroit with him two of the most ex- exciting small point guards I've seen in a while the city needs them I, uh, if Rashad you gotta explain to me what the hashtag Yoda is about Okay, but that's his new thing yeah it is uh, he's decided that uh, he's no longer in the training game, and he's now in the basketball analytics game. Uh, okay. And he's got, I think he's got a pay site um, where he breaks down. Sportstalk2319.com? Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, I'm not in front of my computer, but he, I mean, he knows his stuff. I did quite a few games with him when I was a student. He's He's a real smart cat. I would love to have Rashad Phillips on this podcast at some point. Get a hold of him. He'll probably come on. You're not kidding. I love, I love listening to that guy talk hoops. He's great. Well, moving on. Yeah. Somebody tweets, somebody tweets, make sure to bring Trey Jefferson with you. He retweets that. Uh Uh-huh. So says, Texas Southern's Demontre Jefferson will consider joining former head coach Mike Davis at Detroit season per his Twitter page. The five seven guard averaged twenty three point three points, three point one rebounds, four point one assists per game last year for the Tigers. He retweeted that. Yep. And then he says, "Let's not ignore Texas State is still my number one option." Texas uh, Southern single. Texas Te- Southern, sorry. not Texas State. Was it a regular Texas State? I, am, I don't um, know. No, it's, Mate, it's no, Texas State is in San Marcos. It's a. <laughs> Okay. I went to high school with a guy who played basketball for Texas State. Uh, John Ryback originally played at Akron. That's a that is a uh, that's a habit. Sorry, Texas Southern. Um, yeah. ap- apologies to the Bobcats in San Marcos for confusing you guys with Texas Southern. But actually, Texas I was th- Southern, every time you said that, I was thinking the movie Necessary Roughness from like the old from the nineties yeah. and stuff with with Scott Bakula playing the thirty quote unquote thirty five year old quarterback. I, I, 
I, I also like uh, Sinbad as the professor <laughs> coming back Sinbad. to play defensive line. Uh, I, I one one thing a lot of people may not realize: Jason Bateman. He as was the, uh, as the running back slash uh, the big time donors kid who, who could read. Kind of I think it was the problem. Um. Yeah. He like yeah. He, yeah. It was. He had problems. Uh, that was that, dude, that movie. That movie was great. It was so. It was so like campy. Yeah, it was like so many eighties, early nineties sports movies. I mean, Kathy Ireland was the kicker. Oh, that's, yeah, that's true. For him. <laughs> you know, but but no, it's, you know, welcome to football. Like it's just so stupid, but it was. <laughs> yeah. The so yeah, but it's Texas Southern, not Texas State. <laughs> so yeah, so. He, he, I would, I would be very interested to see Demontre Jefferson make the transition from Texas State to to Detroit, and again, that would be a that would be kind of a thing for them for nineteen twenty. But if you get him to transfer, there's your starting point guard right there. Period. Well, but that see, here's the thing: if they get him. Yeah, and they bring the other guy who's committed, who's a point guard. Yeah, and they have his kid, who's also a point guard. What are they going to run three point guards? I mean, they three point guards under two yeah. under six foot tall. I mean, they could. I wouldn't put it past Mike Davis to do that. I mean, if there's a conference that you can really run a bunch of guards small ball in, yeah. right? Horizon League. Dude, Cleveland State Reds. Cleveland State had a. Uh... Cleveland State had uh, Tyree Appleby and Cash Thomas on the floor at the same time, all for a bunch of chunks last year. So, uh, I would, it, yeah, the, the Horizon League of any, if any place could do that, it would be them. It would be the Horizon League. Um, plus, you know, the way, is, but just based on his numbers, just based on the what his performance at yeah. Texas Southern. You would you'd be you'd be crazy not to ta- not to take a look at him again. Oh yeah, you those just are, would be. Those are uh, K Felder numbers. Yeah, exactly. So you know you can't you don't want to you know Detroit should not be you know they all of their options are open. So and if you got a guy who is committed to your coach, has really good numbers and is has pretty much pointed out the loyalty factor, man. See what you can do. <laughs> I just think it's going to be funny if he brings up uh, all these recruits from the south to Detroit. These yeah. kids are from Orlando and Houston, and you know, all over. They two of their JUCOs are from Florida. These, these poor bastards are going to learn. Somebody better get these kids some coats. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> like our campus isn't it's it's small, but it's not that small. It's cold to walk across in the winter. I mean, there's there was days back in in 2012 and 2013. I thought I needed a parka and, and maybe one of those things from the second Star Wars movie. You know, I, I uh, the Tauntaun? Telling, yeah. I keep telling UWM planners that they gotta start doing what Green Bay did. Mm. And you know you know at Green Bay you can walk you can get around their entire campus without going outside. Yeah, that's same how Cle- uh Canisius is. says. Yeah. Uh that same at Cleveland State did that did that years ago. They they had the interconnector. Oh, believe me. That that's great. <laughs> That was that. They they had that for. I mean, there were only like a handful of buildings at Cleveland State that weren't connected, but they solved that problem when they did their big old, big old building. Personally, plan. I love walking around in the winter when it's cold as hell. All right, good but for you, Dan. You can. I, I, I know that I am very far in the minority in that. You yeah, think? No. I oh, okay. <laughs> All right. It's good for you. I'm not. I cold sucks, but I can't get away from it. So, <laughs> yep. So there's that. So, um, yeah. That, the the, but man, but but yeah, but yeah. The the the, the environment's going to be an interesting. Will as it is with everything else, it's going to be, you know, there's going to be a change. There's going to be a culture shock. But I mean, but if you're you're playing for a guy you want to play for, it's worth it. I mean. My question so. is, how scared is Greg Campy right now? I don't know. We got to figure out how to get him on the show. I mean, <laughs> we I ask him. he finally has a worthy adversary. He's probably he's clearly committed to not going to the tournament ever again. 
Um, and <laughs> I don't really know wow. if they're going to get the chance at this point. I mean, Dude, the Raptors shots off fired. Team. What the heck? The rivalry. Beg- See, this yeah. So, so um, yeah. Uh, I, I. <laughs> Bob Man. just stuck. Bob just stuttering Holy his way crap. through. Holy crap! Not to offend anyone. I it's, love it. It and I, you no. know you know who else lo- would love to hear that is Campy. Campy Campy oh. loves that kind of stuff. Hell yeah! Absolutely. That's what, we gotta remember. We gotta we, remember that's what this is about. This is about having fun. It's yes. about you know having fun. Let's have fun with it. You know. And it's about time because you've had that crosstown rivalry thing for the, like the last three years, and it's basically been you know Oakland. Oakland winning the whole time, and then yeah, we're what we're you, you don't, two and eight against them. Yeah, do you really want to have that problem? I mean, now you now you have now you're in a situation where you don't where where you see potentially the rivalry finally rekindling because it isn't really much of a rivalry right now. <laughs> no, and and really, the you know the funny thing that the Oakland people always say, and they have to be reminded of, is we can can't win the McCaffrey trophy because we lack half the sports you need to win it. Right. Yep. Um, and, you know, they're, they're, they dominate us in everything pretty much except, well, everything right now, but we could be very even with the soccer programs of basketball. But we, you know, our second biggest sport is men's lacrosse. And our women's lacrosse team wasn't that bad this year either. I would love to play lacrosse. God, I hate that. I, I hate having. I hate not having a lacrosse team. I wrote an article in 2008 or 2009 that UWM needs to get on lacrosse and they need to get on it pronto. And a bunch of Marquette people read it and one started a program. <laughs> and one they're like, "Hey, we should do this. This sounds smart, but let's well, do it over you know here. You unless wait, you know, make a big east." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait five years. You may see a bunch of Horizon League teams get it because you already have Cleveland State and Detroit with lacrosse teams. How much? How it's, it's only a matter of time before a few more jump on board. Well, lacrosse is the growth sport, and if oh, yeah. uh, you know, if 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 UW Madison and Marquette or Green Bay, like if if two of those three other teams in the state played baseball, I would be all about switching to lacrosse, but. I, I'd like to keep baseball because I'd like uh, it's it's the one trump card I got against Madison fans no matter what is you yeah. know they can they can they can say whatever they want about my basketball team I'll just say all right fine well let's try a different sport how about we play baseball and they just get so pissed because they all want it and they don't have it no they don't have a baseball team no Madison cut their baseball team in ninety one oh yeah I didn't know they didn't have a baseball team. Yeah, they're like uh, I think they're they might be the only uh, Big Ten team that doesn't have a baseball team. Mm. They have so- they have softball, but not baseball. Well, you learn something new every day. There you go. That's right. So, yeah, but no, the that whole the rival, the, yeah, the rivalry needs to be rekindled, and you you got Mike Davis on one side, Greg Campy on the other side, and so much, so many. So many opportunities for smack talk between Detroit and Oakland fans. I, I think you guys have been I think you guys have been waiting for this for a while. <laughs> yeah, it should be fun. I'm I'm excited. I, I hope he can you know, I don't expect him to do much in year one, but it'd be nice if they were competitive at least. You know, I think we'll... that I think that's not too much to ask. I mean it's the no, horizon I, league. It really does depend I mean, on who he brings win with. more than eight games. Yeah. You know, especially if for they sure. get all of the Texas Southern recruits, and that gives them two JUCO guards, mm-hmm. the point guard that Rashad was talking about, Harg or whatever I can't pronounce his name, uh, but he seems to kick and shoot really well. Davis's kid looks like he'll transition to D1 pretty well. I mean, he had a lot of high major offers. A and M. He was committed to Houston for a long time. Tulsa. Some yeah. some decent basketball schools are recruiting him, so he can clearly play. Um, and then you got sure. Josh coming back, and and Josh has been a uh, a 15 to 20 point a game guy the whole time he's been in college. It, it's good that McFally is coming back because if he wasn't, I mean, well, he here's was, the everybody thing who's leaving, that people don't realize his mom works at the school. Oh, or works for a nonprofit connected to the school. Nice. So, I don't know if it's just in the neighborhood or if it's connected to U of D, but I found that out just searching through the Detroit news comments because she was yelling at Tony Paul for saying he was transferring. 
um, when he wasn't. So, I mean, she's already in the area. That that probably has a big big part to do with it. And if Gerald is a shell of what he was his freshman year, they, you know, they got some players. So, you know, I think winning nine, ten games probably isn't that hard considering you've only won eight the last two years. Um, and some of those were, I'd say probably a half of them were just bad coaching. I mean, it says uh, something when your head coach was suspended and you won more games suspended than you did with him there. It definitely says to me that the players didn't want to play for the guy. Well, you know, you can't be telling people, uh, you know, they need to suck certain things. It's just inappropriate. Oh, jeez, yeah. <laughs> it's just inappropriate. And uh, yes, it is. Yes, it's, it is. <laughs> it's, it's too bad that, uh, you know, someone who prides himself as such a Christian... Uh, is going around telling people that you know it's I don't think the guy's ever going to get a job again and I feel bad for him because he seems like a really nice guy but I I I coach at the high school level I aspire to coach at the college level I've never once thought of that coming out of my mouth uh, or anything even remotely close to that <laughs> so the no fact that's that, that's not good that that was a thing and then that it got to the paper and then the school still didn't address it because it's U of D I think that's that's the funniest thing about this whole thing, is the radio find, silence. The radio silence about everything. Like, even when I was in school, you could always get tidbits from players and stuff. And I think that's why, you know, when Jeremiah was the SID and and PJ a little bit, um, but I worked for him, so we have a better relationship. But me being such good friends with CB <laughs> and and knowing Chris Jenkins and being friends with uh, McCallum Jr., I was able to pretty much know what was going on all the time where now it's either people don't care, which could be part of it, or they've really kind of tightened up the ship a little bit. Um, but even like when Paris Bass was falling apart, like that was public knowledge to everybody who went to the school. Shit, and, that was public knowledge to a lot of us who didn't go to that school. No yeah, kidding. I mean, I just, I don't know. U of D is really weird. And even the press conference like was weird. They said, one of my buddies I was covering said, he goes, it was like all the media people were there and then they get their little bits of footage and they're just they just leave like two or three people had in depth this interviews is for with the, uh, this is for Mike Davis's in like introductory press conference yeah yeah like there was probably only 12 people there at least media people i mean i'm sure there's there was over 50 or 60 they probably got people that have nothing to do and don't even know we have a basketball team to come and sit there but I don't know. U of D is in a weird spot, and it got weirder for the five years I was there, and I've heard in the last two years it's only gotten weirder. So I'm interested Lovely. to see what Mike Davis was so excited about. Obviously, probably the chance to win at a different level, and, you know, they have money and whatnot. But I mean, coming from somebody who was the student body president, I, I really have not been happy with how the university has managed itself and presented itself in the media the last two years. and. You know, going two months without a coach and then it getting like leaked six times. I mean, you know, they yeah. were people were leaking that we were going after Patino and then we weren't going after Patino and then they made a statement that they weren't going after Patino. Um, and then there's a rumor going around that we like offered Andy Broncoma from Ferris State and then we pulled the offer and it has something to do with the fact that he's white. Like it's that's kind of weird. Yeah, more and, than somewhat. Yeah, and the I mean, I get, I, 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 I get some of it, but like go ahead. now they're saying Terry Foster came out on his podcast and said we didn't offer Bronco, and Bronco was the one who was saying we didn't offer him. But Steve Bell, who's, in my opinion, and, and probably most high school basketball coaches' opinions, the best person for, you know, player ranking and and evaluating talent in Michigan, was very upset on Twitter and his Instagram in the middle of AAU season because his buddy Andy Broncoma got screwed over somehow by U of D and now, you know, a month and a half later, there's radio silence on it. That's probably a story that will eventually come out and is probably going to be really good because I'm pretty sure the exact wording of the tweet was, you know, I thought all that racist stuff went away in Detroit in the 80s. I was not aware of any of this. I mean, yeah, the I'm, fact that the, I mean, honestly, the fact that all the other stuff that all the other all the other weird crap from the last two months was happening. I mean, that 
I mean, I get it. I, I'll, I'll say this. I will say this. I, will say I, this. I, I get it. If somebody, if 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 like UD, if Detroit Mercy wants to look at like hiring a coach, and thinks that hiring a, a black coach would be more pal, uh, I don't know about more palatable, but more of like a, it would be it would be easier for the area uh, the area recruits to kind of like accept. Um, I, I, I'm, I I'm definitely somebody who would just hire. I, I would always hire the the best coach possible, because obviously, you know, obviously black kids have no problem going to play for Greg Campy, or yeah. you know, it, it, so I don't, I don't, I don't really see like that, that race. I don't, I don't think that it's a real thing, but I, I understand. No, the, I don't think it is either. But yeah, I, I just found yeah. it interesting because that's not the first or last time I've heard that. and I mean, it's not the first, it's not going to be the last time that I've heard something along those lines involving U of D and, and athletics and administrative positions and, and having been in one of those. Um, I mean, that's I, how we ended up with Val Jordan, if you, if, you, if you guys aren't familiar. That was how, that was, that was, that was that allegedly, that was the reason that we ended up hiring Laval Jordan. Not that because he was black, but because um, he was the best of the two candidates, and then the chancellor got cold feet about something. Because when when Amanda Braun fires Rob, God damn, I, I I wanted to not talk about that. <laughs> you went forty five minutes without. We could have closed out the show, and you wouldn't have. Been, th- th- well, I, this is my fault. Well, I blame myself. Well, when Amanda Braun fired Geeter, there was tremendous backlash because of all the things that she did leading up to it. A lot of the fans were, you know, in my opinion, rightfully pissed off that she kind of screwed over the players in in getting setting up this firing. Well, she just, they decided that she's going to have a press conference to kind of explain, maybe not why, but like kind of like uh, the excuse for the press conference is let's set up, let's talk about how we're going to hire the next, you know, what we're looking for in the next coach. But there was also like a bit of it was, well, I'll answer a couple questions as to why not. And a state senator who's an alumnus, uh, alumna who actually, she's a, a, a lot more involved than some of our fans realized. Um, she's always been kind of around the program. In fact, I met her through a UWM basketball game up at Green Bay like 10 years ago. It was a state mm-hmm. senator, Lena Taylor, who's black, who serves a largely uh, black sect of the population. She's a state senator for Wisconsin. And she literally comes to Amanda Braun's press conference and starts calling out, calling her out for racism, that she was not hiring, that, that she was, that she fired Rob Jeter, the black coach, so she could hire T.J. Otzelberger, the white coach, and that, that, and that she always hires white people, which, funny enough, is actually there was a little truth to it. Now, Amanda Braun's not a racist. At least I, 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 I don't think that she is. Besides but, of all the other things that are wrong with her, you can assure us without <laughs> beyond a reasonable doubt that she's not racist. I, 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 I would like uh, to. I would love to believe that Amanda Braun is not racist. I would love. I think that it's more that Amanda Braun just wasn't paying attention and didn't yeah, realize that was... of the forty of the forty five uh, employees she had in the athletic department that when she fired the men's basketball coach, she would be down to one black employee at a university that represents a er, uh, city of forty four percent black population. Like maybe she, maybe, maybe she wasn't like paying too much attention to it. But she got called out for it. Well, Amanda Braun wanted to hire T.J. Eltzelberg. We knew this right away because Amanda Braun had um, Amanda Braun had followed T.J. on Twitter in like November of the fifteen sixteen season, several months before she fires Jeter. So we always like we knew she was going to go hire him. And honestly, as much as T.J. had the reputation of being one of the biggest cheaters in college basketball. I was fine with it because he's a Milwaukee guy, and I've, and Milwaukee reached its greatest heights under a guy who's uh, who's an unabashed cheater in Bruce Pearl. So I, I I'm personally as long as it's like things that I'm fine with, which is like, what kind know, of cheating I'm, are we fine with up there? Uh, <laughs> what? Are, oh, bags of cash are okay, but but not prostitutes. Is that how it works? Oh jeez. Well, let me. I, I, there, there's a time and place to talk about Pearl's Girls, and it's not tonight. <laughs> tonight. No, it is definitely not. In fact, on that note, 
No, I, I, I just want to say that the chancellor made the decision. Amanda Bra- he told Amanda Bronny he was going to hire TJ Otzelberger. She tells TJ, TJ is on his way in from Ames, Iowa to take the job. And at 11 o'clock at night, uh, Chancellor Mone calls Amanda Braun and says, you know what, I changed my mind. I'm going to go with Laval Jordan. And she had already told the guy, she had told people in the athletic department, we're hiring this guy. They were planning, like, putting everything together because he was going to have a press conference, like, the next day. <laughs> he had his kids asleep in the back of the car. And oh, this is, and she had to make the call, like, you know, I'm really sorry, but the chancellor changed his mind. And a lot of people think that the reason he changed his mind was because uh, he didn't want to be seen as hiring this white coach right after a state senator was shouting racist at his athletic director. So it race it it comes into play, even though like I'm I'm of I'm of the belief that you always hire the best person for the job. It doesn't matter what race or if it was a if it was a you know a a green a, a green person transgendered uh, Hindu from Mars. I don't care if they're the best person for the job. They're the best person for the job. It doesn't matter to me. But I I know that sometimes like I I I, I know that. Some coaching staffs will fill out a staff and make you got to make sure that like they will say, you know, I want to make sure that we hire black people, a black guy, because, you know, sometimes recruits are not comfortable with a white guy coming with with a staff that's entirely made up of white guys, or maybe they're not entirely comfortable of a white head coach or something. I think it's ridiculous because I like like you were saying, I think it's it's something we should have moved past, but. I, I understand that it, there there may be the feeling of that from other places. I don't. I, I would hope that it's not the case that we just we we move past it. But I know that I know that that sentiment is out there. So it wouldn't yeah. it wouldn't surprise me to find out that this Ferris State you know, that the coach at Ferris State ended up you know getting courted and then turned away from because he's you know a white guy and they wanted a black guy as the head coach. Like that wouldn't be a surprise to me. And on the same coin, God, you know, it wouldn't surprise me that they reached out to Mike Davis first. Mike Davis told him, "No, I'm not interested at all. Leave me alone." Well, goes go to the interviews. Bronkema kind of likes him, not sure. Circles back to Davis, and he's still on the fence and says, "Okay, I'll come talk to you." That wouldn't surprise me that that, that scenario happened because it sounds to me like that was a scenario. That seems like the more That's, plausible scenario. That sounds pretty legit. Uh, that, but, that does you know, sound White like... people from mid to northern Michigan being angry because they weren't hired and a black person was. And Bronkma is not the guy who's angry. You know, it's this, it's these other talking heads. Yeah. Um, that that also doesn't you know if you know anything about the demographics of mid to northern Michigan. Um, they're they're not very woke up there. Aren't they planning really? on electing Kid Rock? No way. To be a senator of your state? Who? Oh yeah, Kid Rock. Oh yeah, Kid Rock <laughs> and Ted Nugent. Oh, oh good, yeah. Maybe both. Jeez. Okay, yeah, that. They just yeah, won a national know. title, didn't they? Didn't Ferris State just win a national title? They did. Yeah, they Division Two. Right. Yes, they yeah. did. Yeah, and they had a pretty good team too. Um, mm-hmm. You know, they 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 weren't bad, and no, I, I know a lot of our fans were really excited about the guy, um, and it, it, he it seemed here like he was going to get hired, and then you know it it fell apart. So I don't know if I to be honest with you, the way that that Robert talked about Mike in the press conference, he probably wanted Mike all along, and sure. and him yeah. having been a commissioner in that conference when Mike Davis was there, it, it, it makes. A lot of sense. Was he the um, was he the CUSA commissioner at some point? No, he was uh, the SWAT commissioner when Mike Davis got hired. Vowels was the uh, the assistant commissioner. Yeah, I did not know something that. like yeah. Um, I, I I'll, I'll I'll say this if if I'm looking at if I'm looking at a guy who just won a Division two title and has had success in Division two, or I'm looking at Mike Davis. I think I would probably choose Mike Davis. And oh, the so would I. Yeah. That Mike Davis yeah. is a winner at the Division One level. Well, and, every and here's the other thing about this cat from Fair State. He's from northern Michigan. You know? He is from, like, McBain. Like, damn near Mackinac Island. 
Jeez. And he coaches at beautiful West place. State. If anybody wants to, if anybody wants to plan a trip, take a trip to Mackinac Island. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. But the, the difference in culture between Big Rapids, you know, an hour north of Grand Rapids, that pretty much the basketball and football players are the black folks, and McNichols and Livernois, those are different worlds. I am. Uh, I, I I think I should leave this. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, as, as we're as we're wrapping it up, I think we should wrap it up with this uh, tweet. I put out there like, "Hey, if you have any questions or any comments that you want us to share on the podcast, you know, let me know." And uh, who's Cartwright? Which I don't know if uh, if people know who he is. I'll probably just leave it blank, leave it uh, anonymous. Um, he would be familiar to most Horizon League fans, but he says he says if if Mike David can win there, he can turn goat piss into gasoline. <laughs> oh, man, that's that sounds about right. Well, I owe that guy up here, by the way. Just yeah, yeah, so. and seen him for, but yeah, it, it's there's there's cause for optimism at Detroit. Mercy. Yes, there's, it clearly is. So. There's cause for optimism, and I think this is a program where a lot of fans really see um, their future as a future in the like Atlantic Ten or in a conference at that at that level. I. I honestly do not feel like that is a huge stretch. I don't. Mm. I think, well, so, I, so listen to me. financials it is. Okay. Well, yeah, but I'd like to see what, you know, I'd like to see if, if, if they can have a similar, like a Loyola, similar level of ne- investment from a few. Maybe. Oh, well, and you have some, some donors who uh, yeah. are getting up there. You've got some Sorry. donors who may want to do, I mean, the, the Loyola going to the Final Four this year was exactly what those Loyola fans who gave a pooled $100 million to the athletic department at that university, it's exactly what they were looking for. Was and, they, they wanted a shot at a title before they, you know, um, to, you know, not to be blunt, but kick the bucket. You know, yeah. so they, they, they put them together and said, let's do this. And Detroit has those people, like Carrick said. Detroit has those yep. people. And now is the time for a, a basketball coach and really an athletic director to put together and say, look, Loyola is a program that was one of our, our chief rivals for a long time. They are a fellow Jesuit school. This is a school that we can we can not just emulate, but we should be able to. And the reason they were able to get to where they got was because of that initial major investment from their alumni. So if you so what we need to do is put together a plan to you know, renovate Callahan Hall into a a good home for a strong home for the 21st century. I personally love Callahan Hall because I think it's 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 quite the unique facility. But I also know that the Genteel Center becoming the Genteel Arena was it was a huge part of why Loyola got to where they are. And I think Porter Moser is a heck of a great coach. But I also think Mike Davis is a heck of a great coach, and if they if they True. put together the plan, and they can keep mm-hmm. him around, they may be able to swing that kind of kind of a jump in the program that can get them to an Atlantic Ten, or you know get them to a you know maybe maybe they want to be going mm-hmm. to the Mayak or something. But it's I I, I think that uh, a lot of Detroit fans have lofty goals for the program, and I think that's good. And All I right. think that Mike Davis is the right coach. And they just need to get the rest of the program around him and you know, pushing to the future. Absolutely. All right. Yep. So, all right. So on that note, we're going to have and close it out. Uh, Carrick, we know you're over at Carrick underscore Jones on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for coming on. Anytime, Appreciate guys. it. Thanks, of course. All right. And uh, as always, uh, we're at sportshacks.com, uh, sportshax.com. And we, you can find the podcast wherever you uh, find podcasts and, yeah, I'm not going over the list because we do it every episode. You know where we are. Just do a podcast search. So, all right, we'll see you again. Uh, we'll see you again soon. And uh, thanks for listening. Take care. <laughs>